and welcome to the best Hindu editorial analysis in English brought to you by the 247 and I am Saurabh Day. Well, my dear friends, we have decided a particular thing that from Monday, since there have been a lot of issues in recording the English session, so what we shall do is, we will do a bilingual session once again that we used to do earlier from 7 to 8 p.m. Yes, my dear friends, you got it right. That from Monday, by the way, the English session will cease and rather we are going to mix both the sessions and you know, the English and Hindi session will be conducted live from 7 to 8 p.m from Monday to Saturday and that will be from coming Monday. Okay, so that is today is the last all English session and I hope that you guys will cooperate with us. So my dear friends, first of all, before we go to the newspaper, it's very important once again, I think, to get some motivation. So let's take a look at the motivational quote that we have here. Okay, so here's the motivational quote for all of you. Appreciation can make a day, even change a life. Your willingness to put it into words is all that is necessary. Now, my dear friends, this particular, uh, you know, uh, this beautiful quote comes from Margaret, uh, Margaret Cousins. See, it's very important, you know, in daily life, perhaps whenever somebody makes you feel good, whether it's about, you know, whether it's about opening a particular door for you or whether, you know, whether it's about, you know, uh, serving you the, bit, the dish that you want. So perhaps, you know, small, small thank yous gets, gives you a lot of, you know, a lot of thing in return. So that is why appreciation is actually extremely, extremely important for you. It might be a small thank you, but for somebody else, it can make their day or it can even change their life. So always remember that appreciation can make a day, even change your life. And yes, your willingness, by the way, to put into words and say that you, you know, that you actually want to appreciate somebody or, you know, um, so, or perhaps when you say thanks to somebody or perhaps when you say some nice words to somebody, that is something that, you know, that is extremely, extremely necessary if you really want to make somebody's day or if you want to change somebody's life. Now, guys, let's come back to the phone screen and then we can go perhaps and take a look at all the very important articles that we have here. So, let's start the overview. Okay, so perhaps at left you can see over here, enabling a law. Now this particular article, my dear friend, it's a very, very important article and we will analyze this particular article for sure. This article, by the way, is based, uh, is actually, you know, about disabled, the people who are, you know, who are specially abled and what are the various facilities that should be provided to them so that they are able to live their lives in a better way. Then, you know, over here you can find this particular article is memory, myth and memorial. Now this particular article is about that particular memorial which started a war after 200 years a war ended okay so yes i'm referring to the recent riots that happened in maharashtra so this article is, re is regarding that particular you know memorial and i'm pretty sure that all those of you who want to read this perhaps you should analyze it from your own point of view now guys let's come down and let's understand more about this okay so here's another article over here this too is a right so perhaps you know Let's talk about a particular fundamental right that's all, that is often denied to people. So all those of you who are studying CLAT, this is a very important article for you. So do take a look at this particular article for sure. Then at left, you can find over here game for talks. Now game for talks is perhaps, you know, shows the willingness of the nations of North Korea and South Korea to, you know, to head towards and perhaps to talk with each other and to start cooperation once again and to start coordination once again. So that is regarding the same over there. So yes, from international from the point of international diplomacy, it's a very important article and all the uh, aspirant who are want to become, who wants to become IFS officers in their life, this is a very important article for all of them. Now guys, let's talk about something else over here. Now, this is a very important article that we will be covering today. It's Bengal's burning shame. So perhaps there have been a lot of you know, incidents about, you know, uh, about acid throwing. And what is worse is that the people who throw acid, you know, the, uh, what do you say, the psychotic or perhaps the shameless people or the criminals who throw acid, you know, they go unnoticed and very often they are not actually even jailed. So this particular article is regarding that and we will cover this article today for sure. So do stay with us. Then, you know, this is an entire single page article for the same. So we will cover this for sure. Okay. So that was all from the overview. Can we just come to the full screen once again? 
So my dear friends, today we have got two of the very important articles. One of the articles is actually about a very special law of, dis uh, of on disability, which should be there, you know, and perhaps all the people who are specially able, they deserve that law. And how exactly are we going to, you know, bring that law or what is the requirement or where exactly is the government lacking that we will cover in that particular law. Okay, so that is the first article. Now, before we read the article, before we analyze the article, let me remind you a very, very important point now there's a target there's a target my dear friends i think that if this uh, if this video is really uh, liked by you or in fact if you admire this video then perhaps this video should get a good number of likes and if you actually like the video do like the video and it's also very important for you to know that this particular video is extremely 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 important for upsc examinations for a syndicate bank examinations for ibps clerk mains examination for ssc examination for clat examinations and also for c examination so share this video with the, all the aspirants of the particular examiners that I just mentioned because sharing is caring and now let's go to the article okay guys so here's the first article for you enabling a law okay now what exactly is this about let's talk about that so Supreme Court's timeline to ensure full access for the disabled to public facilities is welcome. So by the way, the Supreme Court recently, you know, they have given a deadline to the various institutes that see now, by the way, you have, they have got a deadline and they have to make sure that all the public facilities must be, uh, you know, must provide access to the people who are disabled or who are specially abled. Okay. The Supreme Court has struck a blow for the rights of the disabled with a direction to the central and state governments to provide full access or to public facilities, you know, such as buildings and transport within stipulated deadlines. So perhaps, you know, the Supreme Court, they have actually, you know, struck a very nice note over here and it has ordered all the central governments and this, uh, the, the central government and also all the state governments to ensure that the people who are specially abled, who are, you know, who have got some kind of uh, disability perhaps, so they are providing provided full, uh, you know, full transport and they are provided full access to all the various transport vehicles and perhaps various buildings that exist in our nation. Now, let's understand more. People with a disability from, uh, you know, uh, from 2.21% of India's population according to 2000, 2011 census. Okay, so by the way, uh, as far as the entire Indian population is concerned, you know, According to the census of 2011, 2.21% of the population of India, you know, is actually, you know, they are specially able and perhaps they suffer from some kind of, you know, disability. They have had a law for two decades to enable their full participation in society. But successive governments have done little to realize those guarantees. So perhaps, you know, there have been various, you know, there have been various laws, by the way, and there has been a law actually which supports these specially abled and it has been there for the last 20 years but still you know successive governments when it actually came to uh, when there was actually a payback time and when it actually came to deliveries these uh, governments they were not able to deliver at all now now you know uh, now perhaps in response to a public interest uh, uh, you know petition or you can say you know pi uh, okay it's not a pil rather i suppose Anyway, because there will be a litigation, petition filed by a visually handicapped activist, the court has issued a series of orders. All right. So perhaps, you know, a visually impaired person, you know, a visually handicapped activist, by the way, he actually filed a public interest petition. And because in response, while responding to that, the Supreme Court gave some very landmark orders. And what are the orders? All the government buildings should be made accessible by June 2019. So perhaps all the government buildings, whether it's actually about the state government, whether it's about the central government, all of them should be disable friendly till, 20, uh, till June 2019. So that is next year, by the way. Half of all government buildings in the capital cities should meet accessibility norms by December this year. And in fact, 50% of all the capital buildings, you know, they should be, you know, they should be at least, how would you say, um, you know, uh, they should be, what do you say, disabled friendly by, the de by December of this year itself. The railways should pro present a report in three months from December 15 on implementing station facilities. So, in fact, it's also on the railways. Now, the railways have been ordered to present a report in three months, by the way, from December 15 on implementing station facilities. So, this is the point that have been that has been mentioned so far. Now, let's take a look at what kind of question can this particular form. And before that, there's an image which we want to show you. Can we have that image, please?
Okay, guys. So here's a bit, uh, here's an image for you, by the way. Number of people in thousands blind with low vision and visually impaired per million per you know million population. So perhaps we are first of all talking about your visually uh, the the visually disabled or the visually impaired people, and this is actually uh, uh, you know across the across the world. So you know the most visually uh, impaired people when it comes to visually impaired per million population people lie in China, which is that you know around the uh, 55.4 55.4 uh, uh, million. That's a really huge number. And then you know followed by India at 53 million. So that's the case over here, there. And anyway, all of this graph is there. I think you should take a screenshot and you should take a look at this for sure. Now, guys, let's move forward and let's take a look at what kind of question can be formed uh, on the based on the article that we have studied and analyzed so far. Can we have that, please? Okay, so here's question number one for you. Which of the following is not true according to para one? So, guys, here are three statements for you. You have got 30 seconds to give me your answer. Your time starts now. In the meantime, I will analyze these options for you. So, statement A over here says, The Supreme Court has struck a blow for the rights of the disabled with a direction to the central and state governments. Now, statement B says, People with a disability form... 2.21% of India's population according to the 2010 census. Then statement C says, now in response to a public interest petition filed by a visually handicapped activist, the court has issued a series of orders. Okay. So first of all, we need to keep in mind that we are searching the not true statement over here. That means statement A, by the way, which says the Supreme Court has struck a blow for the rights of disabled with a direction to the central and state government. Something like this was mentioned in the article. So this is true. It cannot be termed as not true. Then statement C says now in response to a public interest petition filed by a visually handicapped activist, the court has issued a series of orders. Yes, this is also true. So this cannot be termed as not true. Then in statement B, it is given, people with a disability form 2.21% of India's population according to the 2010 census. Yes, this is actually true. We can say the same and perhaps that is why we can say that this particular uh, option of option B is the only correct option because the census was 2011, not 2010. So that is why option number two is the correct answer. I hope all of you mark the same. Now let's go back to the newspaper once again and read the article. Okay, so guys, here we are as far as this particular option was concerned. So this was the last one that we just read. The railways should, you know, should uh, send a report in three months from December 15 on implementing station facilities. Then after that, it was given 10%. So 10% of government, you know, of government public transport must be fully accessible by March 2018. So this is another another very important deadline that has been given. So 10% of all the government transport vehicles, you know, should be accessible to the, all the disabled people by March 2018. It's a very, very important task, by the way. And, you know, and uh, something more has been uh, told over here. And advisory boards should be formed, by the way, by the states and union territories in three months. So another advisory board regarding how are we going to make uh, things easier for people with special abilities, perhaps for them, is uh, this advisory board must be formed by the states and union territories, you know, in three months. Now, let's understand more what's given here. The court's directions should be welcomed by the government and service providers as an opportunity to steer policy and practice towards a universal and humane system. So perhaps, you know, this is something, it's, the, it's a very, very important and a very significant decision coming from the, uh, from, from the Supreme Court. And this is a decision that should be extremely welcomed by the government, you know, and not only by the government, but also by the various service players who are there in the service industry. So because, and this is going to actually make our nation a better, you know, extremely better becoming, uh, you know, towards uh, making a better human system. Now, for too long, planners and designers have built infrastructure for use only by able, uh, able bodies individuals, ignoring the aspirations of those with disabilities and the letters of the law. So, you know, uh, there, it has been a lot of, lot of time, you know, because planners and designers, they never used to, you know, pay any heed towards making anything, making infrastructure uh, disabled friendly. Rather, they just used to, you know, make everything for the able, uh, for the able bodies individuals. So, ignoring the various aspirations or the dreams or the various wants and needs of people with special abilities but good to see that that's going to change now now 
another very important part which you need to cover over here a transformation requires governments to also harness the powers of newer technology so definitely there's a very famous saying you know that you know uh, what do you say need is the mother of invention so this having the same thing and studying the same thing we can say over here that whenever some extreme transformation is needed you know uh, better technologies and new technologies are also needed so this is actually uh, an opportunity for the government to adopt a new technology and you know better themselves now so geolocation is one and it enables targeted provision of services. So perhaps you know how exactly do we uh, target the or do we find a special locate the specially able people? Well, geolocation is going to help us and definitely uh, make us better, make us provide better services to these specially able people. Then it is, uh, you know, it is requirement, what do you say? It is uh, eminently feasible, for instance, to aggregate the travel requirements of disabled people with the help of information technology and smartphones and provide affordable shared transport using accessible vehicles. So perhaps, you know, uh, using the smartphone technology and using modern technology, you know, the people who are actually disabled, better transport can be provided to them and using some shared resources. So this is what is the first uh, draft over here, first idea over here. Then given the emphasis on smart cities and upgraded urban, uh, you know, urban facilities, such schemes should be given the highest priority and startup ideas roped in. So perhaps, you know, there have been lots of talks regarding smart cities and, you know, and various other schemes. So perhaps such schemes, the disabled friendly schemes, you know, should be implemented and should be, what do you say, inculcated in the, in, in the plan of, you know, smart cities so that we are able to bring out with a better outcome. Then, you know, uh, what do you say, railway stations and uh, railway stations and access to train carriages, you know, continue to pose hurdles for not just the disabled, but even the elderly travelers. Now, as far as, you know, railway stations are concerned, I'm pretty sure that you guys know about this, that many a time there's an extreme gap between the railway platform and the, you know, and the staircase of a particular uh, railway carriage. So perhaps this particular distance, you know, it is not only harmful for disabled people, but also for elderly travelers. So that is what is being mentioned over here. The railways should embark on an urgent program to, retro, uh, to re retrofit all stations and try simple solutions such as portable step ladders to help board and exit trains. So this is something that can be done by the railways, you know, they should uh, start having retrofitting all the stations with, you know, portable step ladders. And then, you know, something else can also be uh, pointed over here. Since level boarding is not possible in most places because many a time what the railway tries, they try for, uh, you know, uh, level boarding and it's not possible at various places. So, meanwhile, I hope that you got the basic crux of this entire article. This is about, you know, better services must be provided to the disabled people just because they are specially able. That does not mean that they are not able, that they don't have any aspirations or they don't have any dreams, you know. So, we should provide better services and make the uh, world a better place by providing them what they require and what they actually deserve. All right. So, that is all that was given in this particular article. I hope that you were able to get the theme of it, get the crux of it now let's move forward and let's see what question number two has got for us but before that another very important picture which i want to show to you can we have the next picture please okay guys so here's uh, uh, by the way a uh, difference by you know disability by type and sex in the year 2011 so this is a percentage that shows the percentage and this is according to the census of uh, of 2011 by the way in india so as far as you know uh, disability in seeing is concerned 20.2% of women have this problem, 17 point a particular percentage in men have the same problem. Then when it comes to, you know, disability in hearing is concerned, 17.5, you know, 17.55 around, uh, that's the figure when it comes to uh, for males and, you know, it's around uh, 20 point something for females. Then when it comes to, you know, in speech, so perhaps 7.5 in uh, males and 7.4 in females, that's the percentage. Then when it comes to problem in movement, you know, this is more in males and less than in, in females because 22.5% males find uh, they are more you know uh, disabled by the way compared to 17.5% females when it comes to mental retardation okay over here you know males are actually having a higher percentage it's around 5.8 and whereas females around 5.1 then, you know, a mental illness as well as that is concerned, once again, 2.8% in males and 2.6% in females. And any other disability, by the way, 18.6, you know, I suppose for males and uh, for females rather, I think it's around 19.6, not 18.6. It's a little far, so I cannot see the exact figure. I suppose it's around 19.6. Then 18.7 in males, by the way. 
when it comes to you know multiple disabilities it's a really sad thing by the way 8.1 in females and 7.8 in uh, you know in males so this is something it's about this disability by type and sex and i hope that you had taken a screenshot so far so this by the way will make you uh, feel thankful if you are different if you are not differently able and completely able that what a gift that god has given to you that your ability is not there in these uh, numbers over here now let's come back and let's take a look at the next question that we have over here can we have the next slide okay guys so here's the next slide for you which of the following is true according to paragraph okay so we just studied this particular paragraph in the meantime i hope that we get ready for the next article that we have over here so guys what do you feel you know which of the following is true by the way according to the para you know statement a over here shows the same thing it's about all government buildings you know should be made accessible by june 2019 then you know statement b says that the railways should present a report in 3 months from december 15 on implementing station facilities then statement c over here says railway stations and access to train carriages continue to pose hurdles for not just the disabled but even elderly travelers so what do you think guys what's the, what's the true statements over here i'm going to give you 30 seconds in the meantime i shall analyze these options for you So option A over here says all government buildings should be made accessible by June 2019. I think this is something that was actually true so this can be a part of the correct answer. Then statement B over here says the railways should present a report in 3 months from December 15 on implementing station facilities, okay? So is that the correct answer what do you say guys? Then And then statement C over here says railway stations and access and access to train carriages continue to pose hurdles for not just the disabled but even elderly travelers. So I suppose till now you would have given your answer so far. So let's start analyzing from statement C itself. Railway stations and access to train carriages continue to pose hurdles for not just the disabled but even elderly travelers. Yes, this is true. Statement C is correct. Then statement B over here says. The railways should present a report in three months from December 15 on implementing station facilities. Okay, yes, this was given by the. Uh, it's, it's an order by the court, by the way. And then statement A, which says all government building should be made accessible by June 2019, but should be made accessible for whom? That, by the way, it's something that if it can confuse you. But let me tell you, my dear friends, one thing that the correct answer is that all of these three statements are true. And once again, you might find not an option where all All these options fit because this is an option once again for making sure that you participate and you try to give the correct answers. Because many of the time, what happens is that nobody even tries, you know, and people just scare because they get they get scared from comprehension. So this was just a question, but I wanted all of you tried. So if anybody of you tried to answer with any of the options, you are correct. And by the way, all of these statements are true. None of them over here is not true. So all those people who tried over here, good job, well done. Because I can accept. failure but i cannot accept not trying now guys let's move forward and let's take a look at the next one okay can we have the next article over here on the newspaper because i'm pretty sure that our uh, you know newspaper is ready okay so perhaps you know this is something that should be uh, that should go into your brain first of all look at the look at the face of this lady over here you know she by the way can you tell do, do anybody of you know her but let me just tell you uh her name is priyali datta and i think uh, we have taken her image as well can we have that image of hers uh, on the ppt please we have taken that image in the ppt as well okay so uh, you know that lady over here by the way she is priyali datta you know she is an asset survivor by the way and you know uh, she has she runs a shop and this is actually an image of her in the shop itself so she by the way was attacked and you know she suffered an acid attack which actually burned uh, which caused her burn and actually burned her forehead and also burned her nose by the way she actually is from west bengal so there has been an extreme crisis there have been lot of acid attacks in west bengal god knows what has happened to the people who once used to be uh, who which at the state of the, that particular people you know where we have the kolkata where we have city of joy all of a sudden what has got into them what kind of de demonic act are they committing over here and how exactly is the condition of west bengal going from bad to worse well let's come to the article now okay so guys here's the article for you 
Now understand over here, it's a very painful article, so perhaps this is something that you need to understand. And then again, let me tell you, this particular article is extremely important for UPSC examinations, can also be important in uh, various grammatical uh, notions given your uh, bank and SSC exams, and also from the point of view of CLAT, especially from the point of view of CLAT exams and, you know, some seated exams as well. So here we go. Deepak Rajak and Parul, parents of Deepavali, have nothing much to hold on to except their daughter's black diary in which she meticulously recorded details of her life right until the fateful day when acid was forced down her throat. So perhaps we are talking about uh, a parents, but the parents of, of another, you know, acid uh, victim perhaps whose name was Dipavali, by the way, her name was Dipavali. Her parents are Deepak Rajak and Parul, you know. And nothing much is actually left in the life of uh, the parents of Deepa Vali, uh, Deepa, Deepak Rajak and Parul because all they have of her daughter, what they, what you know, the daughter who was born to them, you know, whom they raised, you know, who was, who has been there in her, in her memories. So perhaps all, you know, the most, uh, the closest thing that they have of their daughter is, by the way. Uh, is, is actually a small black diary in which Deepavali used to note down all the various things that used to happen in her life and until the day when acid was, you know, when she was made to drink acid, by the way. You can understand, she was made to drink acid and we used acids as toilet cleaners, so perhaps, and if, you know, if a drop of acid is, is there on somebody's skin, then what happens to that guy's skin or that person's skin, you know very well, and she was made to drink acid. So let's understand the pain over here. Every moment, of Deepavali's life mentioned in the diary, by the way. So whatever, uh, whenever she felt happy, whenever, you know, uh, whenever she felt sad or whatever was important in her life, you know, whenever she achieved something, all of that part was mentioned in her diary, by the way. One of, uh, you know, one of the last entries months before the 24-year-old succumbed to her injuries reads as follows, you know, this has been translated from Bangla, by the way. They hit me with a gun and dragged me by my hair. Helpless mother, was left pleading in despair. A bottle came out of the pocket and poured acid in my mouth. Face was burning, neck was burning. They all watched in delight. So perhaps, you know, 24 months, that's around two years before Dipavali died, you know, this is the last mention that she actually, this is the last note that she put into her diary. And this particular note, what she said, you know, what she wrote in her diary in Bengali, by the way, she wrote that she was hit with a gun by the people, you know, who actually wanted to pour acid. So those, you know, they people, they uh, hit her with a gun. They dragged her by her hair. Her helpless mother, by the way, she was pleading. She was praying to those people that leave her daughter alone. And then all of a sudden a bottle came out and, you know, or it came out of that guy's pocket. And it was poured, you know, it, you know, and it poured acid in the mouth of the Pavli. You can understand. They poured acid, they made her drink acid and it was poured into her mouth. What is the pain that she felt? Her face was burning, her neck was burning, both from inside and outside, you know. And you know, they, all those people who were doing this, they were extremely happy. They were, uh, she was extremely, she was suffering in pain, she was crying in pain. And the people who were doing this, wherever they were enjoying this, they were, you know, they were very happy about this. Now, let's understand more about this. Dipavali died on October 24, 2017, three weeks before the Festival of Lights, after which she was named of injuries she sustained three and a half years ago. So Dipavali, by the way, she passed away on October 24, 2017, three weeks, by the way, before the Festival of Lights, you know, before the Festival of Lights, uh, perhaps... Uh, after which she was named. So actually, Dipavali, the meaning of Dipavali is Diwali. As all, as all of us know, it's the festival of light, by the way. But, you know, she passed away on, on October 24, three weeks before the festival of lights after which uh, she was named. All right. Now, let's understand more over here. Beside Dipavali's framed photograph on the wall of the two, you know, of the two room house in uh, Satrangpura, in the southern fringes of Malda district, the, tell, the telltale signs of the horrific accident attack, you know, on her in you know, at sea on the on the evening of uh, February 2024 are still visible. So even today, the attack which took place three years ago, even today, the signs of that of that, of that particular attack are visible on the walls, you know, because they are still visible on the wall. And this attack took place on February 20, 2014. Okay, so you can understand that how heinous. 
and in fact how heinous a crime and perhaps how painful was this for them the ashes stained on the wall have not been scrubbed and served as a reminder of the trauma for parul who watched her daughter being brutalized so perhaps you know the pavli's mother's name is parul and perhaps you know these stains the acid stains on the walls you know they remind her every day every day of what happened to her daughter that same daughter that she bore for 9 months whom she raised by the way whom she took care from being a child you know till her that daughter was in her 20s when she died in front of or of, of her own eyes you know you know so let's understand more by the way over here she points to the stains on the wooden door and the floor and the burns on the shawl she wore that day so perhaps you know the acid by the way it was there the acid stains are still there on the door on the floor you know and perhaps on also also on the shawl by the way that dipavali's mother wore on that particular day so i hope guys that now you are ready for taking a look at a very important para jumble but before we go to that para jumble it's very important to take a look at a very important figure at a graph can we have that graph please okay i suppose that will be there that will be shown to you after the question so let's have the para jumble first okay so here's the para jumble for you my dear friends it's a, it's a six sentence sir so first of all i think that you will be able to find the first statement first i'll give you 30 seconds to find the first statement then again i will give you 30 seconds in the, uh, the next 30 seconds you will have to find the logical pairs and then in the final 30 seconds i will that i'll give you you'll have to find the correct order okay guys so the first 30 seconds start now try to find the first statement Twenty seconds left. Come on, people! You can find the first statement. Try to find the subject statement. Come on, people! Try, try. You can find the first statement. Hurry up! Thirty seconds start now. for finding the logical pairs so now you have got 30 seconds find the logical pairs hurry up you can do it come on trust in yourself you can do it come on people 20 seconds left Ten seconds left. You can find this. Come on, hurry up, people! Last ten seconds, people. Hurry up! You can find this. Come on. Okay now I'll give you another final 20 seconds in the final 20 seconds by the way you have to find the complete order of the para jumble okay guys so at 20 seconds start now find the final para jumble Ten seconds left come on people you can do that Okay can we have the correct answer now So guys here's the correct order here's the correct answer for you this is the order it's F A E B D C so the correct order is F A E B D C now see in in F by the way the statement introduces the condition over here beside Dipavali's framed photograph on the wall of the two room two room what two room house that given statement a house in satrangapura in the southern fringes of malda district the tell tale by the way the tell tale signs of the horrific attack on evening of february 20 2015 are still visible that's given in statement e by the way now statement uh, f over uh, statement b or is by the way says that c Uh, after the A E is over there, signs of the horrific incident on evening of February twenty twenty four still visible. Then statement B says the acid stains on the wall have not been scrubbed and serve as a reminder. Serve as a reminder for whom? 
uh, for what? Uh, that's given statement D of the trauma for Parul who watched her daughter being brutalized. All right, that's, then it's given connected in statement C which says she points to the stains at the wooden door and the floor and the burns on the shawls she worn that day. So perhaps, you know, this is the correct order. I hope you got the same. Now let's go back to this article. Can we have the newspaper article now? Okay. So perhaps here's the newspaper article for you. And till now, by the way, uh, perhaps we can, we just uh, study till here, okay. So she said, you know, she uh, points the stains on the wooden uh, door and the floor and the burns, by the way, on the shawl that she wore that day. Then what exactly happened? How was this, you know, how, how was this whole crime, you know, uh, how did uh, this whole crime took place that is explained over here? It was just after seven. Mother and daughter had settled down in front of the TV, waiting for their favorite program to start when they heard a knock on the door. So perhaps it was just after 7 p.m. in the evening, you know, mother, daughter, Parul and uh, her daughter Dipavali, you know, they had settled down in front of the TV, wanting, in fact, rather waiting for their favorite TV program to start when they heard a knock on the door. It was a fin it was a winter evening, by the way. When Parul opened her, when Parul uh, opened it, Ujjwal Mondul, who had been stalking her daughter for months, barged in and switched off the lights. So perhaps, you know, when Parul, the mother of Dipavali, when she opened it to find out who is there at the door, it was Ujjwal Mondul, you know, who had been stalking and following his daughter for months. He immediately barged in forcefully and he switched off the lights. Seconds later, Parul heard that her daughter's heart-rending scream. So perhaps, you know, a few seconds later, a few moments later, Parul heard her daughter's heart rendering scheme. So you can understand that how loudly in pain her daughter Dipavli would have screamed. Now, let's understand more over here. Not an isolated case. Now, this is, see, this is something that is more and more concerning about. This scenario that happened, this case that happened, it is not an isolated case. And perhaps it's actually, you know, it's a very regular thing that's happening. And that is something that points out that, you know, something is definitely and seriously wrong with people who are doing like this. Do they even qualify to be called people? Do we uh, let them live? That's perhaps something that can raise questions. Okay. Now, not an isolated case. Months before Dipavli died, a local court sentenced Mondul to 10 years of rigorous imprisonment for attempt to murder under section 307 of the Indian Penal Code and for causing grievous hurt by use of acid under section 326A. So perhaps, you know, 10 years is what was taken away from Mr. Mondal over here, of this, in rather this criminal Uttam Mondal or whatever, Ujwal Mondal, you know. 10 years was taken away from him for destroying the entire life of a woman, you know, by making her drink acid. Okay, so that's the case. The family wants him to be tried and prosecuted for murder, but their efforts to press murder charges have so far proved unfruitful. The family of Dipavali, her mother and father, they wanted, they wanted to try uh, this model guy, this model criminal, or Joel, or Joel uh, model, the criminal Joel model for you know for murder charges, but perhaps they have not been able to do it so far. Now let's understand more. Mondul's house is in uh, in uh, Bengalipura, Bengalipara perhaps, is about 1.5 kilometer from Dipavali's house. So the house of Bengalipara, by the way, is about 1.5 kilometer from Dipavali's house. There were occasions when, you know, there, in, there were occasions when he, this Mondul, used to follow my daughter on her way to college. So perhaps this is, you know, the thing is that this guy, this Ujwal Mondol who made Parul drink acid forcefully, you know, forcibly, he knew her and he used to follow her. There have been, you know, there has been incidents, there have been occasions when this uh, Mondol, by the way, used to follow Dipavali on her way to college. This is, by the way, her mother or her father saying this thing. He would pass comments and there, in fact, uh, he would pass comments, by the way. And that's the case over here. Then... What happened? Every time I complained to his parents, they refused to pay heed. So, and it is not that, you know, now this is actually, in fact, I will say that the parents, I'll, although I know I'm, I'm making a personal, personal comment over here, but this is required, I suppose. The parents of uh, Ujwal Mondul, they should be equally tried. 
because they are the ones who did not stop their son at the correct time and in fact this is the point over here that you know you know the, the mother of uh, the mother of dipavali parul over here she once she again and again you know complained every she said every time she complained to his parents they refused to pay heed they refused to listen to her instead they approached us with a marriage proposal so how do you uh, you know how do you put your uh, how do you get your son back on track from following somebody from following a girl you present a marriage proposal to that girl's parents so this is what was going on now says parul the family did not approach the police in the hope that mondol would mend his ways now this is where parul in fact uh, the family of dipavali made a mistake that you know that they did not uh, approach the police had they approached the police then perhaps their daughter would have been alive today and we wouldn't have been uh, reading this article by the way so they did not think of approaching the police because they thought that mondol will mend his ways and he will improve now let's understand more so dibyo loke uh, rai chand rai choudhury okay dibyo lok rai choudhury perhaps coordinator of the asset survivor and women welfare foundation aswwf describes dipavali's case as one of the most tragic ones that he has encountered in his work so perhaps you know dibyo dibyo lok rai choudhury perhaps he is the coordinator of the asset survivors and women welfare uh, foundation and he described that this incident of dipavali by the which happened where she was made to drink acid mind you It was actually one of the most tragic cases that he that he has ever come across that he has ever heard. The acid pour in her mouth severely damaged her oesophagus. Osphag os We helped her with many surgeries, but she could not be saved. So perhaps you know, entire oesophagus was burned inside uh, inside her uh, you know neck, inside her body perhaps, and you know numerous surgeries were done so that Par so that Parul's daughter Dipavali gets saved, but it was not possible. You know. he says pointing at the two of her photographs taken before and after the attack so that's the case over here now by the way at this particular time i want to show you a very important photograph and graph that we have here can we have the graph please okay guys so here is the asic attack trend in india by the way that you know the number of incidents and the number of uh, perhaps people or the or uh, the victims uh, thankfully it did come down in 2013 by the way you know uh, initially it was lot more it was at at speaking of the two by the way in 2013 it came down to you know 85 perhaps so uh, victims out of 69 incident that happened although there should be zero let's see when are we able to achieve that because the moment we achieve zero it should remain zero that is should be the ultimate goal now let's come back to the article once again let's understand more over here so uh till now we have studied this article uh, this uh, para now let's understand last part of this particular article for us dipavali's death by the way that certificate which was issued by the state run sskm hospital says her death was caused by cardio respiratory failure due to the septical uh, you know septima septima you know septima that is blood poisoning so she died of blood poisoning that was that that is what sskm hospital the certifies in her uh, autopsy report In this hospital, between 2014 and 2017, more than 10 surgeries were performed on Dipavali. You know, so the, perhaps Dipavali's death certificate shows that she died of blood poisoning. And at this particular hospital of SSKM, by the way, between February 2014 and 2017, more than 10 surgeries, you know, uh, were performed on Dipavali just so that she is able to be saved and she survives. This included. three reconstructive surgeries on her face and several procedures to save her oesophagus unable to eat solid food she remained on liquid diet so perhaps you know again and again surgeries were made a lot of reconstructive surgeries was made to you know to save her face perhaps to improve her face to and several procedures were tried to save her oesophagus so that it is you know it is able to undo the damage that was done to it and and you know she was absolutely unable to eat solid food she remained on liquid diet so this is what that happened on her to her rather now let's understand more over here the latest report of the national crime record bureau 2016 recorded 283 and 307 victims under section 326 a acid attack and section uh, 326 b attempt to carry out acid attack you know that's the case over here of the ipc in india of these 26% 76 incidents and 27% of the victims were from west bengal In comparison, during the same period, Uttar Pradesh, the most populated state with over double the population of West Bengal, recorded 57 incidents and 61 victims. So here's the statistics as far as the acid attacks are concerned. 
Now, Section 326A and 326B, by the way, of the IPC were added after the passage of the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013 because, you know, before this, uh, perpetrators were typically charged with causing hurt, which only invited punishment of three years. So, perhaps uh, here's an image of another acid attack to victim, you know, suffered. And she, by the way, and the worst case, by the way, her name over here is also given. And uh, her name is, you know, Monisha. But okay, so her name is Monisha. The worst thing, you can understand very well that how badly was she burned over here. So the worst thing about this uh, woman over here, Monisha, is that her acid attacker, whose name was Salim, by the way, he has still not been arrested by the police. So this is where we are going wrong. Now, let's come back to the question. Can we have the next question, please? Okay, guys. So what exactly is the theme of the paragraph? Oh, so far, the newspaper has been job has been finished. It's all about the PPT now. So what exactly is the theme of the paragraph that you have to answer now? There are five options. Uh, give us the answer. You got 30 seconds. In the meantime, I will analyze these options for you. Option number one is the horrific tale of acid victims. Do you think is this the, is this the central theme of the paragraph? The brutal attacks of acid throwing, the brutal acts in which acids are thrown you know, on various people, on the people, by the way by some, I don't know what do we call them. The shameful acid throwers, is that the central art, the central theme of this article? Ban on acid in India or ban on, you know, on uh, perhaps on the free sale of acid on in, in India. The brutal face of West Bengal. Is this what this particular article is about? What do you think? What is the central theme? So guys, uh, when we take a look at all of these options, no other option except Option number one, the horrific tale of acid victims is, you know, is a better option than this. So perhaps this is the correct answer and I hope that all of you mark the same. Now guys, let's take a look at the next very important uh, quiz that we have over here and let's have the next section. Okay, so it's the vocab quiz. Now guys, I hope that you guys are ready for the vocab quiz. They'll be asked the question that are you ready or not? Now let's take a look at question number five. Okay meticulously. So what do you think guys, what is the correct synonym for the word uh, meticulously from the options that are wrongly, precisely, ridiculously and criminal. There are, you know, around four options over here. So give the answer, you got 20 seconds, time starts now. In the meantime, I will analyze these options for you. So wrongly, you know, something is done wrongly, not in the correct manner, precisely in the absolutely correct way that is meticulously, then uh, ridiculously, you know, in a very strange manner or not in the correct way, then criminal perhaps in the manner of a criminal. Well, till now, I hope you would have answered the question. The correct answer, the correct synonym for the word meticulously is option number two, precisely. Now let's move forward. Let's take a look at question number six. Okay, guys, so what is the term, what is the antonym for the word uh, succumbed over here? There are various options like die, buckle, catipulate, defend. What do you think is the correct antonym? Well, uh, die means to end, you know, something that it's more like this meaning of succumb over here. Then buckle is something like that only, you know, buckle under pressure, so go down. Catipulate perhaps, you know, uh, get something to make you, uh, you know, go up in life. Then, uh, or go up, or, you know, improve better in situations. Then defend is once again, uh, what do you say? When you absolutely defend somebody or, you know, somebody is not able to get to you or something not able to get to you when you are able to defend something, not uh, the attacker. So perhaps, I hope, uh, till now you would have answered your question. The correct answer over here is option number four. That's the correct antonym for the word succumb. Now let's like, take a look at the next one. Okay, question number seven is right here for you. Stipulate. So what do you think is the correct synonym for the word stipulate? Well, option number one is confused by the way, you know, uh, uh, confusion, stipulations perhaps, then decline, you know, uh, saying no perhaps, or uh, reduction in something disagrees once again, saying no to somebody or something, and then bargain is perhaps, you know, uh, Bargain is bargaining and that is something that a lot of people are pretty good at. Well, the correct answer over here seems to be option number four, bargain. All right, guys, now let's go forward. Let's take a look at question number eight. Okay, so eminent. Now, what exactly is uh, some, was the antonym for the word uh, eminent over here? Then the first word is, you know, uh, prominent, perhaps some well-known, then inconspicuous, then that is not so well-known, 
renowned once again, well known and illustrious. So that's something that's very easily visible. Well, guys, the correct answer over here is going to be option number two, inconspicuous. Now, let's come to the main screen, my dear friends. So, guys, that was all from today's best Hindu editorial analysis. Remember, from Monday, there will be no English version. Rather, what you are going to get is that you will have a combined session of English and Hindi once again. And I will, I promise, I explain, I will explain to you separately in English and in Hindi and that particular session which will be done live at 7 p.m. from Monday to Saturday. So guys, let's uh, see you till then. Bye-bye, take care of yourselves and remember that with the 247, government job is right there in your pocket. Thank you.